and our third and final game for the day and the evening session. Keton Hippos taking on the Jajawa Bulls. Hippos having a narrow win in their game earlier today and the Bulls robbed at the death of their first win for the 2019 CPSL. They'll be looking to have another strong performance in this game, but this one with the result at the end. Players just entering the water. We'll be introducing them shortly. Number one from Singapore for the Jinjou Bulls, Po Yuzhuan. Number four, Stivo Hergele from the Netherlands. Number five, Jeremy Escaf from France. Number seven from Italy, Gianmarco Manuele. From Russia, Vladimir Sadorov. Number 10, and the captain from New Zealand, Anthony Baronson Benui. And 11 from Spain, Vincente Claramonti. Apologies, I do believe Claramonti and the others' nationalities are the wrong way around. Number one from Hungary for the Hippos, Miklos Tima. Number two from Poland, Lucas Pilas. From New Zealand, number three, Cole Hawkins. Number four from Spain, Angel Gordo Herrero. Number five from Russia, Ivan de Belli. Number eight from the Netherlands, Chirk Webers. And number 11 from Australia, Luke Holmes. Our referees for this game. Alan Winter from Wales. And Ti Chi Lu from Chinese Taipei. And a big thank you to all of our sponsors for CPSL 2019. It's a great opportunity to showcase our sport, hosting players from nearly all the continents. A little bit too much ice to play polo in Antarctica. Great 
to see the new players for season two settling into these two teams. Gianmarco for the Bulls, three goals in the previous game. Angel Goro Herrero for the Hippos, three goals as well. from the last game. With the Blue Helmets losing, it does mean that they do have a chance at making finals. They do have to get a result from this game though. However, someone that isn't too happy about the result from the previous game, I have number eight for the Blue Helmets with me, Stephen Hubbard. How you going, Jade? <laughs> Bit of disappointing there. Yeah, no, it's not the result we're after. Um, is it's twice we've gone into the second half with a bit of a bit of an uphill battle, but uh, had a good fight towards the end. Press came out, got a bowl back, but unfortunately, two yellow cards makes it difficult to to break that deficit. Yeah, that, that initially that press was working really well, getting those turnovers, getting a goal, but Tommaso just yeah, not, that... not paddling back to halfway before engaging, and then Ivan the same, just pressing that ball that was out of play. Yeah, no, that's, that's a really tough one. You don't have that physical line. He got a little bit too eager, Must would have thought he was over and just got straight into it and cost us a yellow. Yeah, really unfortunate there, but you do have two points on the commandos. You're still in the fourth place, still on track for finals. Yep, uh, things to improve on. Got some more games to go, so we'll see if we can still get that result and still make it to playoffs. All right, this game, just about to get underway, both teams lining up for the charge start. Who's your pick for this game? I think it's a tough one. I think Bulls felt very robbed after that game earlier today. Will be fighting as hard as they can for any possibility of making finals. as shown by the passion in that charge start. That's a big charge start from Ivan. Yeah, Gianmarco Manuela at the receiving end of Tabellier on top of him, but he wins the free and they will start with the ball. Hippo's not looking as sharp as they have been in their previous game, making quite a few errors that were punished at times. So hopefully the Bulls can do the same in this game. Any mistake that they make, they try and turn into a goal for them. Yeah, there's definitely some big shooters on both teams. We saw from the last game from Orange, um, some pretty high number of shots from the players not converting into goals. We see change straight away. Excellent there from Stigvo Hogele from the Netherlands, number four for the Bulls. First goal within the first minute. Great start there. That's exactly what they'll want. Just round Luke Holmes's paddle. That momentum coming into the first in the first half, getting that first goal makes a very big difference on the water. Putting that other team on the back foot, especially in some of these games where it's very much a trade for trade goal game. Goro Herrero just passing that ball out. The shot wasn't on. See Bulls, another team playing a 2-2 defense, or is a little bit against the traditional 1-3-1 that most teams are playing. I think their captain, Cuppy, will definitely be making that a decision to start with that, to bring that aggression out onto the Hippos, especially because a lot of the Hippos' attack comes from those big drives from their best players, as seen there with the goal to number one, Mikros Timar driving down the centre and getting that shot off. I think one of the weaknesses of the 2-2, two -two, unfortunately, if those uh, top two players go a little bit too wide, it, it makes a big opening for that centre drive, as Miklos just showed. Her 
Gabriele just waiting for his inside players to create a screen, and we do have one there. Claremont has got some space on the right-hand side, and he gets the goal. Nice work there. Great screen from his teammate. Blue was Satarov. So a good response from the Bulls to get that lead again. Only two minutes, just over two minutes gone in this game. We've already got three goals, so we hope that that will continue. We're now four goals. Hoping that this will be a nice and exciting game with lots of goals throughout the game. Great goal there for Goro Herrero. Just round the paddle of Emanuele and into the top corner. Shot, right. shot blocks there, falling to the hippos, so a bit of a turnover. You might be able to correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, hippos are through to the playoffs now, regardless of results from here on out. Looks that way. With the win earlier today, it doesn't look like they'll have any chance of dropping out of the top four. Looks like they might be looking to just to trial a few different tactics in these, these coming games, the sort of free, free training games for them now they're through. Those of you following us on Facebook may have seen that the prizes that the top teams get, that badass gangster ring. <laughs> I think everyone's very keen to get their hands on that. That's or get it on their hands. It's a nice little change from the previous two. We had a, a cup in the last two and now we're, we're going to little Super Bowl style play, play rings. Been an interesting little change. with everyone coming from different places around the world. Trying to share a trophy is not the easiest of things, so having a little momentum that everyone can take home is a great idea. It's a new idea to canoe pole as well. It's often trophies and medals. A, a ring will be an interesting little token to take back to all the different countries, show off. So Hawkins's goal there, disallowed. The foul had occurred beforehand. The whistle had blown. If the referee blows his whistle, they do have to take it back for the foul. They can't play advantage after the whistle's been blown. So Chuck Webbers just bringing that ball in, looking at the shot, feeds it across to Hawkins. He's got three paddles to get through. And it's blocked out for a corner. I think a nice bit of sportsmanship from the Orange team, calling the, the tip, playing for the corner. I think the referees called a goal line. A bit of a discussion from Cole with one of the Orange uh, Bulls players. Always good to see and always nice to receive that in uh, on the water as well. Yeah, we saw Anton Holmes do that for the commandos for you guys in the previous game. So it's nice that the sportsmanship always outweighs the result. Not always, but in CPSL it has so far. Definitely keeps the, the group nice and tight if you can just make those little little honesty calls when you do feel that tip on your paddle. Weber's over to the right-hand side. Shot from Hawkins, but easily blocked by the keeper. Falls to Claremonte, who sends Escaf. Fast break is on, sends it across the other side to their captain. He's got two paddles to get through, but he gets it. And he's very happy with that goal. Bulls restore their lead, three goals to two. Great work there from the New Zealand captain. Holmes taking a dribble down the left hand side. Passes inside to Goro Herrero. Over to Hawkins. Round to Debellier. Debellier shot blocked out. Hippos do have the corner though. You can see Miklos Timar for the Hippos working inside. 
Trying to set that screen against Gianmarco. Lake Holmes back to Goro Herrero. Tabellier in the center. Across to Hawkins again. Hawkins shot. I'm not sure if it actually came out of his hand or not, but it ended up in the water right next to him. We would have been seeing some more action from Hawkins if uh, he thought that was a paddle foul. The hippo is getting quite trigger happy here. I think trying to squeeze out a goal in the last few minutes. Simple as that. Dribble from the corner while no one's watching. Have a shot top corner. Great work there from the Hungarian, Niklas Timmer. Three goals each. Just over four minutes left in this first half. Shot bouncing off the bar. And Hawkins manages to win it. So Hippos do get the turnover and bring the ball down the field. Switch on the other side to Hawkins, but again his shot is blocked. Hawkins not having as much luck as he did in the first season. He does call the timeout now for his team. He's shooting in the game earlier today. One goal from six shots. He's not going to be happy with that. No, it's always a fun conversation to have with Hawkins. He takes pride in his shooting, and when it's those percentages are showing like that, um, it really gets under his skin. It'd be more under his skin knowing <laughs> that we're talking about it as well. I'm sure there are plenty of New Zealanders back home watching this, seeing uh, some, some common traits that they see at some of their local comps as well. Nah, he's, a, he's a good guy, he's a good guy. Bulls using this opportunity to their own advantage as well. Although the Hippos called the timeout for them to have a discussion, it does give them the opportunity, Bulls that is, to have a talk about what they can improve as well. We did see the Bulls utilise timeouts in the first season very successfully scoring a number of goals immediately after taking their time out in attack. Turk Febers across the Goro Herrero. Looking to try and feed it inside, but Escal's paddles in the way, doesn't want to risk it, so he sends it over to the left hand side to Hawkins. Bull's definitely looking for some of their strong inside shooters. I believe Pillar was a, a very big force in the previous season and even in this one still. That inside shot, he has quite a nice range of mo mo movement with that arm. Gordo Herrera just giving away the foul there. So ball's breaking quickly, looking for some space. Down the left-hand side, Hull back to Escaf. Herger lays in front, he's only got two paddles to get through, but it is deflected out under the bar. Doesn't look like this. Deflection has been picked up, so 
Hippos will have the ball. There was a green card given there. Fortunately, we didn't quite catch who it was for. Looks like it was number four, so either Ankel or Stevo in the Netherlands. I'm going to guess by the turnover, it's probably for the Bulls. Berbers giving it to Debelli. Feeds it inside to Timmer. Just loose there, but Debelli picks it back up. Illegal paddle foul on the inside there for the for the hippos. Weber's down that left hand side now. Shots blocked by Poe. Does fall for Pillars, who tries to feed it up to Tima, but Pergolet does pick up the ball. Tries to create some space. He is paddling with his hands because he's left his paddle behind, but does get it across to Satarov. And Pillars makes contact with Satarov's PFD, so he does win the free. One minute left in this first half. The scores are still 3-all. Both teams locked in a bit of a tussle at the moment. John Marco's shot deflected down. Loose ball there, picked up by Webers. Tries passing, but is intercepted by Jean Marco. Webers gives away the foul there. He's a bit unhappy about that. Claremonte. Back to Manuel. Under 30 seconds left, only 20 seconds left now. Back of the hand. The original pump and fake had Luke Home sold. Eight seconds left. Hawkins with another shot blocked. So uh, I don't think his shooting stats are going to be very good after this game, unfortunately. And Bulls just hold on to it. Vlad Satarov with a long shot blocks there. I have seen him make shots and goals from that distance in training though, so may as well take it. But that is the first half. with you shortly.
So a little, few minutes before we get the second half underway. Good performance from both teams, but arguably the Bulls looking a little bit more settled with their team structure than the Hippos. Yeah, maybe there's a little bit of tension relieved, a little bit more freedom to play now. They, it's a little bit harder for them to make the playoffs possibly. Maybe the, the Hippos just relaxing a little bit too much now that they're actually in as well. Having a little bit less tension on the water definitely seems to make teams play a lot better. Both teams lined up. Ready for that charge start. We have Jean Marco and Ivan. Great work there from Emanuele for the Bulls. there from Poe for the Bulls, just fumbling the ball and falling for Debellier. Fast breaks on, but the pass was intercepted. Does look like a foul was given. I think a legal tackle for coming up onto the deck on that first tackle there. Interesting, because that was a fast break towards an open goal, but it does not look like a card has been given. Great work there from Luke Holmes to put that ball in. It was a very fast, quick chest pass, catching Poe off guard. Emanuele just racing down. Sends the ball out, back out to Sadorov. Now with Hergele. to Claramonte, Hergele over the other side, John Marco, oh, just bouncing off the bar there, very lucky rebound back into the Bulls hands and it looks like it's a holding call on one of the Bulls players on the inside, John Marco is going to take his time to try and set up for a nice inside shot. Got Vladimir on one side, screening, but unfortunately that shot is just off that bottom corner. And the follow-up from Claramonte deflected out for a corner. Hogle feeding it inside to Cuppy. And the captain gets his second goal of the game. Very excited about that goal. Nice big fist pump from Cuppy. Bit of frustration there for the Hippos. It's like the defenders paddle, deflected it around the goalkeeper. Also obstructing the goalkeeper from really getting to it. Weber's shot there just straight into the paddle of the ball player and it looks like a bit of a fast break potentially on here but great work from the Hippos to slow it down it does across, get across to Poe Very aggressive turnover from the Bulls there almost getting a clean fast break and the confusion on, on the turnover Green card for that hack in that original play there for one of the Hippos players. And Poe is calling a timeout for his team. So they will have a chat. Good to see the Bulls again using that timeout while they are in attack, as they did in the previous season see what impact that they can have on their play. 
So just looking at the stats before, it's um, a very tight result comparing to some of the top scorers from the previous season. The Hippos having, I think, a couple of the top five scorers and the next closest from the Bulls down in the uh, I think bottom half of the, the scoring range there. Still a bit of a change changeover from last season. Quite a few new players in the Bulls, some very big shooters. We'll just see if they can look to convert some of these shots into goals. Well, I think the Bulls did have to their advantage, although they didn't score as many goals as some of the other teams. Those goals were shared throughout the entire team, with five of their players all scoring four or three goals each. So it's good to see that those shooting options and threats can come from any player on that team. They're not; they weren't relying solely on their big players like the Hippos do tend to do sometimes in their games. Yeah, with Ivan de Bellier getting MVP last season and being a fairly continuous force in CPSL over the last couple of years as well. And same with Lucas Piller. He's, uh, he's been through three years, I believe, now quite consistently in the green team and the Hippos. Great steal there from de Bellier but it does fumble out of his hands, and Anthony picks it back up. One and one. Nice lob there to Gianmarco, and it's in. So, Bulls getting another goal in there. Not a lot Luke Holmes can do there, one-on-one, -on -one with an excellent shooter. Guesses the right way, but just doesn't quite get his paddle there quick enough. So, Bulls with a two-goal lead now. First three minutes of this half played, seven to go. We be interested to see if the Hippos look to push out and press or man out with four players, seeing as they don't need to get much of a result here, see if they want to try and practice that to close the gap or if they're going to stay tight and try and conserve themselves for the rest of the season. Some of the hippos are putting a little bit of pressure on, but just the top player. The other three are happy to sit back in defense. Maybe just testing the waters to see if he can rustle some feathers off the top there, get them to get a bit agitated and start getting a bit more aggressive than they need to be. Shot there from Escaf out for a corner. Hawkins just going out to the corner to try and intercept that pass. Some very isolated pressure from the Hippos here against the Bulls. We'll see if it keeps building or if that's just what they're looking for to see if they can get a little bit of a tip here or just wind down the shot clock those extra couple of seconds with that, that one-man pressure. That's Kafov to Hergele. Back to Emanuele. He's got some space in the centre. And his shot's just over. Holmes looking for the fast break there, asking for a ball quickly. Doesn't quite get it though. Yelling at his team to go, but yeah, just brings the ball up himself. Got off Herrero to Hawkins. Herrero. Looking for the feed in as Luke slots through that centre. That little bit of a hole in that 2 2 defence. Just opening up for him, but not able to get the ball in there for him. Hippos with two inside now. He lost Timmer. His usual position. Hawkins is inside for a bit, but he's gone back out again. He's now on the right-hand side. That shot option again. Great work there from Gianmarco Emanuele to block his shot. Seeing a very fluid defence from the Bulls here as well as they're moving around, tracking the players and the bowl and the threats. Seems to be working quite well for them. Another backdoor drive from Hawkins. Tries to get the feed in. Intercepted. And it does look like Turk Webbers also gave away the goalkeeper foul. Another very quick turnaround from the Bulls as well. Big aggression, two players up already. 
KW trying to feed it across to SCAF, but intercepted. Now with Pillars, the captain. Little fumble there, leaving the ball behind, but He's taking no his time. Patience is key. Hawkins to Holmes. Back to Hawkins. And his shot glancing over the, the outside of that upright bar. Hawkins arm um, making contact with the captain of the bull's arm, but again, Anthony has his hands up in a stationary position before Hawkins starts his throwing movement, so. No foul given from the referee. Manuele to Claremonti. Looks like the Hippos might have transitioned to a 2-2. This could be a bit of their... They're experimenting now while they've got the time. They're two goals down with three minutes left. Putting a little bit more pressure on the opposition, although it might not matter for this game with regards to their position on the ladder. It's a good one to practice for future ones. Claremonte just trying to feed that ball inside, but again, to Bellier. Pounces it, but he f feeds it through to Hawkins, gives it to Pillars, and it's a loose pass there from Hawkins off the back of Pilaz's boat and out for a corner. So yep. nice little tip from Jean Marco, I think, that just just got it and got that lucky bounce off the tail of the hippo's boat to get the corner. It's interesting seeing the, the Bulls still being very aggressive with their two goal lead. So we're trying to push that ball in. Well, excellent work there from Vincente Claramonti, number eleven for the Bulls. Dances past the, the side play there. Bulls clearly wanting to extend that lead. Three goals now. They did have a substantial lead in their previous game against the Wolves, but the Wolves caught them back in that second half and had that clutch equaliser with two seconds left to get the draw. The Bulls were devastated and they're just not going to let that happen again. Unlucky shot there, bouncing off the bar for Pillars. Does bounce favourably for the Hippos though. Gordo Herrero's shot blocked by Emanuele, and it does fall for him as well, so there's a turnover. Now with Poe. Under two minutes left. Looks like Hippos have decided to come out for the press to see if they can get something back from this three-goal deficit. Five man out. Emanuele's pass just not quite making it, but Looks like this aggressive defense has paid off as well. So just a little loose there from the Bulls. The Hippos do get the turnover. 90 seconds left in this game. We hope the Bulls can hold on to this lead. They'd be devastated if they can if they lose a three goal three goal lead with a minute 20 to go. Weber's shot just getting off that upright, bouncing out. So just a few of the hippos' shots just not really working to their advantage. Maybe some confusion from the hippos. Press five out, leaving a player open to get that long shot, but results in a turnover. That's a workable result for the hippos there. One minute left, three goals to go. That could be a big comeback. I think they gotta be pushing for it. Weber's shot just straight into the heads of Escaf. Emanuele just sending it down the other end. It looks like Hergele's racing it on. Bit of a tight angle, but he gets it. 
gets it in. And it's a four goal lead with 33 seconds. So I think that tight comeback is yeah, I th I think not on the table anymore, baby. <laughs> I don't think I'll be putting money on that comeback now. No, that, that Bulls aggression in the turnover is definitely paying off. There's been a few now where they're getting, getting good numbers up the field very quickly and the Hippos are struggling to cover it. Those are really nice goals to get on the water if you can get that, that quick turnover to sprint up the field. A few seconds, pocket a goal, back into defense. 10 seconds, so Gordo Herrera is going to be just looking for one final goal, but straight into the paddle. Does fall for Claremont. One second. Long oh. shot. Oh. And just to the side, and that is full time. So the Bulls get their first win of the 2019 CPSL competition with an 8-4 convincing win over the Hippos. Hippos not playing the best of their games, but all credit goes to the Bulls that have come out incredibly strong with a very well earned win. Definitely some good paddle blocks from the Bulls there. I think uh, the, the shot percentage.